So what's going on guys? We're back here again today for another sick review. This time around, as you can see behind me, I've got this nasty G80 M3 competition. You guys know it's gonna be sick. So without further ado, let's hit that intro. excited to have you on the channel bro i'm yes, super sir. fired up man definitely yes, glad to take a gander at this beautiful g80 m3 comp man oh let's, yeah uh, let's let's walk me through what all we got going on here all right so this is a 2021 bmw g80 m3 competition um exterior color is brooklyn gray the in interior color is called Kayama Orange. I call it KO, knockout interior, you know. For the, <laughs> uh, uh, so um, as far as like mods and stuff that's done to the car, so I'll start with the exterior first. Exterior, I have the car lowered on AST um, springs. Um, also have spacers, um, 12 millimeter in the front, 15 millimeter in the rear, and also did a wheeled stud conversion. Um, I just did the um, carbon fiber air inlets on the front end of the car. Um, if you get the carbon exterior package, you get those included. I didn't get that because I knew I was going to be doing stuff in the aftermarket. So I just did that. Um, I also did the GTS um, OLED tail lights. Put those on the rear of the car as well. So I did full, um, no, I did PPF, full PPF the front end um, and the roof. And, um, and then I also had the car fully ceramic, um, ceramic pro. C quartz, um, finest reserve ceramic. That's so, perfect, um, man. Definitely the best way to, you know, protect your investment, keep those rock chips under control. I know yeah, those can yeah. definitely be uh, quite devastating. Yeah, it's actually know? already <laughs> saved me because I got one in the middle of the car where a rock hit it kind of hard. Oh yeah. And um, you can, but it, it tore some of the PPF, but the paint's good. So okay. It, it, it did its job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and as far as the inside of the car, so the car has the carbon interior package. So it comes with the carbon fiber pedals, um, the carbon fiber around the steering wheel, and then also the, some of the carbon fiber accents inside the car. I also added some carbon fiber rear seat top caps. Um, they kind of like the, the rear seat, the top of the rear seat. There's like a little in cutout. And so you can get like a carbon fiber cap that goes kind of over that. So I added those as well. Actually, the interior is actually pretty well outfitted from the factory. I mean, they they've gave you they've given you everything you kind of need in here, um, where you don't have to really add too much to make it look good. That's definitely a nice place to be, man. I'm I'm amazed like the seats like you can just tell like the the quality of the leather like it's soft but yet very supportive. I love the bolstering, man. It really it seems like can, it would you can hold adjust, you. You can adjust that too to make it really. Easy oh more. man, that's that's uh that's definitely a nice feature to have. Yeah, and that's the thing is um people everybody's asking me why did you option the carbon buckets because you can get these in the carbon bucket mm -hmm. seats that look they look great but as far as this being my daily and me being a bigger guy i was like <laughs> man i need these and also i need the ventilated seats so these yeah. have the ventilated seats in them you can't get that in the carbon buckets you can't even oh really it. so if you want ventilated seats you have to get the standard sports seats but oh. these are for 90 percent of the people these these are these are perfect They're, you're not going to move around much in these and um, and they, they they look great. I think they still look good. So yeah, man, definitely the perfect balance. I mean, super comfy, very supportive. I mean, this this definitely feels like a premier level of like luxury interior. Definitely a lot better <laughs> than the previous gens. They really yeah. stepped the game up on the interior, and I think that's what they saw what Mercedes and what Audi was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and they was like, okay, we got to step our game up as far as the interiors of our cars. So I think they did a real good job. Oh, one other thing I also did, I did ceramic coat the leather. Oh, very this. nice. So that's why the leather feels got, it's got this kind of feeling to it. That's mm -hmm. the ceramic coating on it. Cause um, I did notice like I had wore like some new jeans in the car, and Ooh. like it got I got the uh, transfer. It'll bleed over. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, all right, I gotta go ahead and get these things coated. So it helps with that as well. And then also I had spilled some water in the seat, and the water just stayed right on top. It didn't sink in the leather. Oh, anything. perfect. So it makes it real hydrophobic, and it just helps keep it clean. You know, it makes it easier. So. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, as far as any uh, performance modifications, I know this is like a, a pretty new platform. So, you know, you've definitely kind of, uh, you know, sort of been a pioneer, you know, mm -hmm. for the for the G80. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like power, what are we looking at? So stock power is rated at 503 and um, 478 um, from the factory. Um, I did do a stock dyno, dyno about 495 and right at like 492 torque, 495 wow. horse. So, of course, BMW underrating their engines. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they like dyno on like 87 gas or something <laughs> i mean i don't know but they always underrate all their engines based on those numbers this car actually if you do the conversion to what the crank would be from the dyno jet conversion this car should really be rated around about 550 horse okay. from the factory instead of the 503 um but as far as um, some mods i did add on the race chip so the race chip added um about five i'm now about a 552 wheel wow. 578 um, pound feet of torque um, so the race chip added, added a good bit and then I also just added an intake burger motorsports um, Intake and that's about it as far as like performance mm -hmm. mods. There's not a whole lot available there You can get a downpipe you can throw in some ethanol content throw in some e blends and mm -hmm. um, You can get a mid pipe and stuff like that. I haven't got any of that stuff yet, but I do plan on getting some so We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's going to sound good, man. I mean, I think definitely, uh, you know, the introduction of the B58, I think, was really a game changer for BMW. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. we've all seen what we can do with 340Is, you know, 540Is, the Supra, obviously. I mean, definitely some guys putting out some really impressive numbers. Then, obviously, you know, you translate that into the newer generation with this being the S58. I can only imagine they've taken it up, like, another level even beyond that. Oh, yeah. Like, the um, M4 drift cars, they had the same engine in it, the BMW ones. They, they, they're all at 1,000 horsepower. So BMW wow. turned them all the way up to a thousand horsepower, and they raced those at a thousand horsepower all day long. With the S58. With the S58. Wow. Yeah. So that lets you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's rumors right now in the forums. We won't know until we actually get everything tuned and unlocked, and everybody starts pushing limits. But they said that these internals can hold a thousand horse wow. stock. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I don't know if I'm getting. It. I don't know if I'm going to turn it all the way up. My goal, really, I want to be around 700 wheel, and I and I think I'll be good. Yeah. Because you know. I think 700 wheels is a nice number. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we think about like coming from your last car, you know, uh, if you guys didn't see it already, I mean, we had that uh, that F82 M4 with mm -hmm. the S55. I mean, you had full bolt-ons. You were just right at about 500 wheel and 93 gas, yeah. if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, and I'm already that now. You're starting already now. that. I'm, I'm starting now. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, stock, I was putting out almost that, that stock. You know, I was putting wow. out 494 stock. Oh, wow. wow. So I was, you know, it, that shows you That's just, just the, so how much, much they... Wow. Yeah, they really underrated this engine a lot, and so, yeah. Well, that's exciting, man. Uh, as far as uh, wheels, tires, suspension, anything uh, anything going on there? So, just the AST um, springs, um, I got it lowered on. Nothing else has really done the suspension. The suspension is pretty much stock, it's, you know, outside the wheel studs and spacers. Um, as far as the wheels, these are the 826M wheels, so they're kind of like a honeycomb, like concave wheel look very nice a pain to keep clean but they look very good um and these are wrapped on um star rated michelin pilot sport 4s tires so these tires are different from the ones that you buy off the shelf from any other tire manufacturer they actually have more dry compound and actually some of the compound from the cup uh, the michelin pilot sport cup 2 tires ah, in okay it. so it has like i think like the standard um michelin pilot sport 4s tire has like three um compounds and this tire has four so it has four okay. different compounds and has a, a different dryer compound to add it more dry traction. Mm -hmm. So these things on the track, man, like even when I did took delivery of this car and we drove it on the track, um, it was ridiculous. Like wow. the amount of grip that you have, and you'll, you'll be able to see, they'll be able to see when we take it out. <laughs> the amount of, like I don't slip, like I'm getting grip. And this is real, real drive. This is an X drive. The X drive was, I can only imagine, but this is real, yeah. real, real drive. I haven't got it the broke the, the brake loose yet. Even on the track when I was driving, I was pushing it, it wasn't really breaking. It was just handling the curves and just kept going. I don't know what magicry or what sorcery they did, <laughs> but it's it's it's, yeah. it's, it's kinda kinda wild. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I well, appreciate you taking the time to uh, give us a breakdown as far as what you've done with the car. So I guess uh, next thing we'll we'll go and take a drive and we'll see how it does. Oh yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, so we're setting off here in the uh, M3 Comp, man. I gotta say, I am very excited right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that got up to, that's, uh, got up to a good speed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude, to, to say that polls would definitely be a massive understatement, man. Yeah, that's man. definitely got some serious pickup. That's the thing. This is this isn't even a tune. It's just a piggyback. <sighs> yeah. that's, so when the just tunes a piggyback. come out, I mean, there's there's a couple guys I know. They're in my come in my groups. Yeah, they got the they got the JV4. They're running like E40. They're yeah. in the mid sixes with like just JV4 down pipe, and you know they're pu pushing mid sixes. Um, there's a couple guys with X Drive getting like two sixes, the zero to 60, mm -hmm. 10 one quarter. Like, this guy, I mean, <laughs> this platform is going to be insane. I, I'm telling people right now. Wow, it's man. Be insane. That's, I mean, dude, I'm, what really impresses me, man, honestly, I mean, obviously, you know, we did a review on the last car, you know, the F Series M3, or I'm sorry, F Series M4, is just how well it puts down the power. Yeah. Maybe it's got something to do with the way they, they redesigned the differential and possibly a combination of that with those new Michelin tires as yeah, well. That, I mean, that hooks. It's a wider track. So there's 275, 35, 19s up front, and 285, 30, 20s in the rear. Uh, so they, okay. they made, the tires are a little bit wider than what they were previously it's mm -hmm. in the front. So I think that helps. And also, I know they said they moved up the torque band. The, the, the peak torque is on the previous cars was like right at like 2500 mm -hmm. so as soon as you really got on to it you were already at peak torque and you know i think that was breaking the rear end loose so i think they i know they said they raised the um, peak torque to it's around like the mid threes so i think that helps definitely when you're putting the power down so that it torques a little bit further on so mm -hmm. when you first punch it you're not like spinning out the rear end right the yeah because it's like if it's too in your face like down low i mean it's just you're just going to be sliding i mean it's not really exactly. uh you know that's when people get in trouble exactly as <laughs> so you see all the salvage titles from it <laughs> yeah i mean there was a lot of people i know that, that spent that send their f80s and f82s into the um into the ditch you know you, you, you spin around like a turnabout you punch it and that rear end's going to kick out on you yeah and then if you don't know what you're doing you got a bad day yeah it's really gonna be, that's gonna be real expensive yeah. <laughs> So one thing that's interesting, you know, looking at the, uh, you know, the difference between the G series versus the outgoing F series. Obviously, on the F series, you know, we always had that DCT, the, the dual clutch transmission, which is really snappy, was really quick, yeah. uh, but definitely had some quirks. Obviously, DSGs, DCT sometimes can can be a little finicky Most um, across different makes and models. But uh, with the introduction of that ZF8 transmission, how would you say like you would describe the difference? So. Um, I did a full video on this on my channel as well. Shameless plug. Um, but um, <laughs> so um, I would say this. This ZF, the way that it's tuned in this car, is 90% of everything the DCT was. Wow. It's only a small percent that the DCT is a little bit better. Like when you're in full throttle, foot all the way down, really punching it and you're going through the shifts, I think the DCT was a little bit snappier. Okay. But as far as everyday driving, um, as far as just like even spirited driving, going through and using this transmission, I would take this over the DCT any day. The yeah. DCT was, it was snappy. You got those, it felt like whenever you shift, you was breaking something. And I know <laughs> a lot of people were like that about it. And with this, this is a lot more smooth. It's a lot more comfortable. So a lot of people miss that line. I've seen that a lot in the comments. Man, I just can't, this car's just too comfortable. It's too comfortable. You know, I'm just like, I think BMW wanted to build it is the ultimate driving machine, but they right. wanted to build a car you could take to the track, beat up, and then drive it home, and it still is not going to kill you. Right. And this car accomplishes that. It does so many things well that, you know, I'm not too mad that they went with the ZF8. Mm -hmm. And also, this, this ZF8 also isn't the same ZF8 you get in, like, an M340. It isn't the same ZF8 mm -hmm. that you get in, like, a Supra. This is a different ZF. Mm -hmm. It's programmed different. The programming on it is different. And I actually have three shift levels. Just kind of used to have like in the DCTs. You used to have the three shift levels there um, where you can go from like level one, level two, level three. Level three being the hardest. Yeah. And um, when you go in, if you put it in level three on this, like, like I'm going through the down shifts. I mean, it's quick. Up shifts oh, wow. pretty quick. I mean, yeah, that's snappy, dude. And that's a, Z, that's a ZF8. This is you right. know, slush box. It's, you know, whatever. Sl slush box. Come on. So, yeah. No, I mean, I see why all the manufacturers are doing it, man. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, all the Audis, I mean, Porsches, I mean, all their you know, RSs, Le they Lexus. They move from the DCT to the ZF8. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like pretty much every manufacturer is using that transmission or, a, you know, a, 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 a variant of that transmission. You know, yeah. There's obviously a reason for it, but so I could see why everybody's going that way. Yeah, and I, I know these can handle the torque. The ZF8 has been proven to handle a lot of A lot more torque. torque. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. I've seen that across the board pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you have any uh, no divert, no aftermarket diverter valves, blow off valves, or anything That's like stock. that? Just stock diverter. Yeah. yeah. Everything's stock. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine with those BMS intakes, you probably get a lot more induction noise as well. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's one thing too. I don't know. I shift down here a lot. I don't yeah, know. you're not a. You've never been a paddle shifter guy. Yeah. You've never been a paddle shifter. Guy. I, I'll do it. Like I'm going like a. When I'm roll racing, most of the time I'll I'll go up here with it. In Mexico. But, yeah, in Mexico. But it's like <laughs> if I'm like street driving, I don't know. Cause I'll I drive with this in and I'll you know I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh man. I have to say, man, I'm pretty impressed with the ride quality of this car. I feel like it rides a lot better than the uh, than F series. Well, I, I also put it in comfort. This road that we're on is real bumpy, so I, was, I oh, put it true, in comfort. Yeah. This road is really bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that says a lot, man. I mean, what what the you know the chassis can can how it can perform even with aftermarket springs, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that like you can retain all your you know factory like driving modes yep, with the springs. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, for like a daily driver, I would say this is probably like such a happy medium. You know, like you're not like losing any features. You can still do everything that you would like to do. Obviously, yeah. if you need to go to comfort, sport, dynamic, whatever the case may be, it's pretty much got you covered. Oh yeah, most yeah. definitely. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna beat you up. You can get right. to work. You can do all that. And if you wanna go to the track after all that and have a little fun, you can do that. You certainly can. <laughs> <laughs> Those intakes are so loud, man. Yeah, they're all loud. <laughs> and all, the windows is up and everything was still yeah. in them. Yeah, it was really loud. Uh huh. <laughs> now, any plans for uh, future mods? Anything else coming up on the horizon? I, mean, I know it's obviously still a pretty new platform, so there's probably a lot of companies that are still like doing their R and D to, to bring new products to the market. But is there anything you got your eye on as, as far as that goes? Um, I will be doing full carbon seat bags. Okay. Uh, very very soon. Um, could be possibly that I may be trying another intake as well. we'll okay, see. all right. We'll see. Right. Uh, um, I definitely want to tune the car. Uh, right now, the only way you can do it right now is to pull your actual um, DME out and mm -hmm. have someone ship it mm -hmm. to Germany and Femto can unlock it for you. Um, so I'm not really too big on that. I'm going to wait on the OBD flashes yeah, to come out. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I thought about getting the downpipe. Exhaust or something. Or yeah, I definitely want to do some exhaust work. I'm yeah. definitely just trying to figure out what exactly what I want. Um, Cause I'm never one that wants a really loud car, so I think I may just do, I may just do the downpipe and the axle back and leave the stock mid pipe. Okay. I don't know. Or do leave the stock muffler, do a mid pipe and downpipe, and leave mm -hmm. the stock muffler. So I don't. I'm trying to figure out which way I want to go with that. Yeah. Um, so I'm waiting for other people to be. So I can get sound close to everybody else, yes. and I can make a decision. So you don't want to be the guinea pig just yet. <laughs> yeah, because you start messing with exhaust, and your exhaust sounds horrible. Then you can, yeah, you can have a bad day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So. Well, it's interesting too, man, because I know uh, a common point of criticism on the uh, the older the S55 was people did not like that rasp. Yeah. But I don't hear that with this car. So it doesn't really sound raspy. So you don't. I have seen people that in certain mid pipes brings it back. Really? Like, certain, like, like it was, huh. I'm not gonna throw out any names, but there's a, there's a cat back system out there that will bring the rasp back. Uh -oh. like, and I'm just I don't know if it's the way it was designed uh -huh. or whatever. But the, another reason is this is equal length from the factory. So the down so the way the the turbos are in the engine, one turbo's in front of the other. So in the older design they had them both both the um, the downpipe both cut off at the same point. So therefore, you have one downpipe that's longer than the other one. So when it meets back in the back, it's unequal length. Mm -hmm. So in this car, what they did was the, the turbos are still one in front of the other, but they have the one that's um, a little bit closer. Is it routes a different route, and then they mm -hmm. meet in the middle of the exhaust to give it an equal length. So that's why you don't initially get that rasp. It doesn't sound like a lawnmower when you first <laughs> crank it up and all that. You don't get that it's because they fixed that issue. Right. So BMW listen on that. Right. Well, that's definitely uh, that's good news, man. Because I know that was commonly a point where a lot of people were a little bit, you know, hot or cold on the uh, the old old exhaust. And I'm sure you know a lot of companies will probably do what it takes to sort of refine and shape the tone to kind of keep everybody happy. Oh yeah. So. Oh, Dude, that thing just it just hooks up so well, man. Yeah. It does. I mean, it's just like another completely different animal from the outgoing model. Like, yeah. It's just, it's a totally different car. It's fast, definitely fast. Yes. I mean, 
granted, you can get the F the F80 and F82 can be just as fast as this. You throw some E in there, upgrade yeah. turbos, do all that stuff. But this, what you're starting with, oh, this yeah. is gonna, this is gonna, whatever numbers you can get with this yeah. is gonna be. It's just a totally different ball game. Yeah, yeah. Taking it through some turns here, dude. That feels very planted. I'm quite impressed, man. That two fingers. Two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> It takes it back to that first video we did way back. Remember, yeah. you're the four series. Oh yeah. And that person yeah. didn't want to let you over. You're like, yeah. you gonna let me over now? Yeah. Like, you got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible drivers, man. Yo. Everybody, become a better driver, please. Yeah. yeah. Do do it for the community, man. <laughs> you know what? I've been driving with the exhaust flaps closed. What? Man, I'm what? sorry. I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh man, it's in comfort old man mode. <laughs> yeah, my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries, yeah. man. I mean, dude, it sounds good in both settings, man. Now, do you get a lot of burbles with the exhaust no, refactoring? Like, it's, uh, you get very, very little. Um, mm -hmm. you, you'll hear okay. them a little bit now with the exhaust being a little open. Um, but you'll hear a little bit, but it's not a lot. BMW very, very BMW muted down the burgles on the stock cars a lot. Civic hatch. Uh oh, that watch out, man! Watch out. You don't want no Smith. <laughs> want some Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely tell like you don't feel like that mechanical engagement as much with the yeah. transmission. Like if you do the DCT, like you're gonna feel bah, like that, that kick bah, in the pants. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. just that's, you know. and that's the thing, people are like, oh I love that. It feels feel like I'm driving a manual. <laughs> you're like, well get the manual for Get that. the manual car that play, right? Yeah. They have the manual version. Uh-huh. Yeah, it could come stock with less yeah. power, but once you tune it, it's gonna be the same, yep. same engine. driving machine you know yeah. that's that's you know the car kind of speaks for itself at that point yeah, you know <laughs> they can get you in some trouble man. yeah well guys thank you so much for checking out today's video don't forget to hit the video with a thumbs up subscribe to the channel make sure to follow james i'll be sure to leave a link in the description box down below i'll be sure to see you guys in the next one have a great day